Guys, are you familiar with the note of Immortelle, the everlasting flower? So I feel like this particular note in fragrances is a perfect note to create the feeling of autumn because the note itself Immortal is a dry flower, so it has the kind of dry leaves, shrubs, just like, just imagine autumn when things start drying up, kind of an effect. But the thing is, with the fragrance itself, actually the note itself, when you use it in fragrances, it takes on the characteristic of like maple syrup, brown sugar, caramel, along with the dried, dried leaves as well. So you can actually get sweet or you can add sweet notes to create this kind of an effect of the brown sugar, uh, the caramel, the maple syrup and things like that. So since we are in autumn, we're going into winter, I feel like I should put together a video featuring uh, 15 Immortel fragrances in my collection with one bonus option as well. So if you're curious to learn about Immortel and fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today we're talking about Immortel in fragrances. Kind of an underrated note. It's kind of a flower. It's called Everlasting Flower, but it's not necessarily smelling like flower. To me, it smells like dried leaves and shrubs and things like that. And if, as I was saying, it can take on the smell of, uh, you know, brown sugar, caramel, Think cookie butter, like speculus. So if you like that kind of a smell, you can actually get Immortel to smell like that. And then of course, uh, it does have the dry experience. So if you like the idea of dry fragrances with dry leaves, dry shrubs, touches, and things like that, things that smell like, or fragrances that smell like autumn, this is your note. So I would suggest you try some of these fragrances. Before I get to the fragrances, I'm going to let you know about an amazing book from the folks behind Nay Magazine. I have a link to this book in the info box. You can go buy yourself a bottle from ZGO. It's called Immortel. And this is Nay. They publish a quarterly magazine, book magazine, periodical of uh, fragrances and things like that. But they also have this series of ingredient or notes based books. And they have one on Immortel. And the cool thing about these books, including the Nay Magazines or periodicals, is they have Usually this at the end, it's a selection of fragrances that you should try. And I've got some of these fragrances here I'm gonna to talk to you about. So I have a link in the info box to that uh, book. Uh, you can grab yourself a, you know, a copy at uh, ZGO, which I've linked to. And some of the fragrances here I also have linked to various websites. So why don't we go ahead and get started. First one we're gonna to talk to you about is from the house of Sigil or Sigil. I think it's Sigil. This is Anima Mundi, this one right here. For me, this is a tuberose white floral balm. Actually, I should say jasmine and tuberose along with rose. There's Hinoki, but it also has some Immortel in the notes as well to give you that kind of a dry effect. I'm, rank I'm not ranking this list, but the fragrances that I'm gonna talk to you about first are the least Immortel forward. And then we're gonna get to a point where it's all about Immortel. So here, the Immortel is kind of an afterthought, but it does have that kind of a characteristic of dried leaves and things like that to kind of dry up the fragrance but it's floral and it's also woody so we're starting off with sigil anima mundi it's a very underrated indie house if you guys don't know it do check it out i bought that bottle from zgo perfumery here in san francisco moving on to the house of um, Atelier Materi, this is Cacao Porcelana. So once again, we've got a fragrance here that utilizes Immortel, but not uh, as a prominent note. It's more of like a supporting note and more of like an afterthought supporting note here. This is kind of a shiny porcelain-like cacao chocolate fragrance. It features notes of white cacao, tonka beans, light tobacco, rum, davana, jasmine, sandalwood, patchouli, and Immortel. So that Immortel kind of adds a dryness to the fragrance a sweetness, a bit of a brown sugary touch against the, the cacao touches and the boozy touches in here. You've got a bit of bitter nuttiness from the tonka beans, a little bit of tobacco-ish touch, but they also have added tobacco in here and then the booziness from the rum. I like this one a lot. It's one of my favorites from this house, another fragrance house that's very underrated uh, and uh, they sell the fragrances here at ZGO as well. But uh, I met the brand 
for the first time in 2019. This was actually one of the fragrances that they had launched when they first um, did a show in Pitti, and uh, that's where I got to meet them. But they do have some solid fragrances. Definitely check out Cacao Porcelana from the house of Atelier Materi. And as I said, some of the fragrances that I'm gonna talk about first are not so immortel prominent, but then we're going to get to a bunch that are. So the next one is going to the house of Francesca Bianchi. This is Unspoken Musk, the latest fragrance. I'm going to put some on because I am not wearing any fragrances uh, right now. So Unspoken Musk in the end is a musk fragrance with that Francesca Bianchi DNA. It's a bit anomalic, but definitely the Immortel is there. And I feel like the Immortel kind of actually contributes to that kind of uh, sweet tonka-ish powdery iris base. So it kind of adds a sweetness to the base of the Francesca Bianchi fragrances. This is musk with castoreum. There's civet, there's tonka beans, there's sandalwood, there's iris, magnolia, vanilla, immortel, and bergamot. It's there, you can notice the, the immortel for sure, but for me, this is more about the musk. It's animalic. The animalic qualities are not overwhelming. You might think it is, sample first, but I quite enjoy unspoken musk from the house of Francesca Bianchi. This is uh, the third fragrance I'm talking to you about today. Moving on to the house of Jacques Fat, this is Velour Boise. So, velvet wood, I guess that's what it means. Um, yeah, this is velvety, smooth, woody fragrance, and it features lots of woods here. There's spices, lots of them. It's a very spicy fragrance. And then you've got that immortel note thrown in there to give you that kind of a very autumn-like experience. So you've got the immortel for that dry, leafy, kind of dried uh, shrubbery kind of a touch here, which adds some sweetness, a bit of brown sugary caramelliness in here, contrasted with the spices and, of course, lots of woods. So this experience right here with these three notes that are very, very prominent here is that kind of very autumn-like experience. But they do throw in some booziness from whiskey. Hey, I love to drink and sip on some whiskey when it's kind of cold outside, right? During the autumn months. But then they also have some patchouli and guyac wood. So it's a very woody experience. It's very, very woody fragrance touch here. And of course, you've got some light booziness and of course, a little bit of a caramelly brown sugariness from that immortel note. So it's Velour Boise from the house of Jacques Fat. So up next, going to the house of Guerlain and their Art et la Matier collection. This is in the older bottle. This is Queer Beluga, this one right here. Really beautiful suede leather. To me, it's a suede leather. It's soft and kind of supple and very, very... Uh, you can kind of experience this kind of butteriness of this particular fragrance when you're wearing it. And I like the name Queer Beluga. It's a really beautiful name. It does use Immortel here a little more prominently than the first two fragrances I spoke to you about, or maybe the three. But uh, once again, this is uh, not about Immortel. It's vanilla with suede leather. There's Heliotrope. Then finally, there's some Immortel with amber, patchouli, and tangerine. Probably one of the better fragrances from the Art at Amatier collection. This was my very first bottle, and I bought it during the height of the pandemic, just before they did the rebranding of the bottles. So I don't know if they've done any changes to Queer Beluga. And I kind of kept it in a you know, cool, dark, dry place because that's what I recommend for making sure your fragrances don't turn. But I had to pull it out for this video. I'm, I'm, I guess I'll eventually buy the new bottle, but uh, I quite like it and I kind of hidden it. Maybe it might be a collector's item or maybe sell it later for a much higher price. But definitely you have that kind of brown sugary caramelliness from the Immortel here contrasted with this kind of very vanillic, soft and uh, buttery uh, suede leather note. So Queer Beluga from the house of uh, Guerlain at number five. Again, this is not a ranked list. Uh, we're getting into lots of Immortel now, lots of it. This is uh, probably one of the most Immortel forward fragrances. Going to the house of Atelier d'Azor, this is Musk Immortel got the name Immortel or the word Immortel in the name, you know that's what it's going to be all about, but we've got Musk and Immortel together. For me, this is a very unique Musk in that it's very Immortel forward. So you have these kind of nuances of caramelliness, you've got this kind of brown sugariness, maybe a bit of maple syrupiness as well, contrasted with the muskiness of the ambrette seeds and the musk in this particular fragrance. It does get powdery and then it also has some uh, juiciness and some zing and uh, tart bitterness from grapefruit in here as well. 
And then to top it off, they've thrown in some Cipriol note for a very unique aromatic woody touch, almost like vetiver and patchouli combined together. Very, very interesting fragrance. It's definitely very, very musky and immortel forward. You definitely experience the kind of um, autumn-like touch in here. You've got that here from the immortel. It's very, very in your face. It's a big immortel fragrance and I quite like it. It's autumn in a bottle. For me, it's a musky autumn fragrance. Musky Mortel from the house of Atelier Desor. That's the sixth fragrance I'm talking about today. And this is the very first fragrance I bought from this house. I bought it from their Paris boutique back in 2015. This is Atelier de Oranges like this. It used to be called Tilda Swinton like this. Tilda Swinton it was involved in the creation of this fragrance, the actress, uh, but they changed the name to just like this now. This is Immortel in your face once again, but it's inspired by the golden ginger looking person she is, Tilda Swinton is. So they've got all these ingredients or notes in here that kind of take on that color characteristic. So we've got Immortel here, we've got pumpkin, we've got ginger, we've got clementine, there's heliotrope, vetiver, musk, orange blossom. So in the end, it's autumn and a You've got lots of autumn-like touches here, like the pumpkin, you've got the ginger, you've got the clementine, the heliotrope, and the, of course the immortelle. It's a very, very unique fragrance. I actually fell in love with it and I thought, you know what, this is a very unique fragrance. I have not smelled anything like this. I'm going to buy it. It's very unisex. It's not necessarily feminine because the immortelle, even though it's kind of a flower, it doesn't really smell like a flower. As I said, it has these kind of like leaves, dried leaves, shrubs, kind of a smell, and it reminds me of autumn and that's what you get here with the immortelle, the ginger and pumpkin together it's autumn in a bottle so Tilda Swinton like this or I should just say like this by the house of Eta Libre de Orange is the seventh fragrance for you today moving on to the house of Manos Gerakinis this is Immortel here is Immortel taking it into the complete gourmand direction here you have a fragrance experience that's like dipping into a tub of cookie butter just think speculous that's what this fragrance reminds me of so if you like that idea this is a fragrance you must get your nose on and even though it says immortelle you experience it but you experience it totally gourmand here you wear it totally gourmand here it's brown sugar with cinnamon there's immortelle there's benzoin there's milk there's sandalwood there's patchouli and cloves it's a yummy fragrance it's not necessarily yeah i would say it is i shouldn't say it's not necessarily it's definitely very very fully gourmand here and really highlighting the Immortel and take it into the very, very gourmand direction. You have that brown sugary touch, to totally get it, you wear it, and then you also have that milkiness in here as well. Just imagine drinking some milk and dipping into that speculous tub. Anyway, Immortel is the eighth fragrance I'm talking about today. That's from the house of Manos Gerakines. All right, up next, going to the house of Gutal Paris. This is Sable, this one right here. Brand new bottle. I have another bottle that is in the previous version of this bottle, like the brand, it was Anique Goutal, then it became Goutal Paris. And just as an FYI, last time I was in Paris, they have redone the bottle, but not the bottle itself, but they've done the actual uh, front of the bottle, the, the label. So they've actually kind of taken into more of a vintage direction. And this is one of the better fragrances from this house. It's totally in your face, Immortel. It, it acts like maple syrup. It wears like maple syrup. It's like very, very uh, taking that Immortel. You have the touches of the dryness here. You wear it like that. It's very dry and leafy, dry leafy and shrubbery, but then it kind of has this characteristic or the impression of uh, maple syrup here. It's Immortel with cinnamon, lots of sandalwood and amber. There's a little bit of black pepper and black tea in here as well. It's a beautiful fragrance. And I just took out this bottle. I had bought it a long time ago. It's been a year and it's gone really golden. As you can see, it's a beautiful color. I love that. This to me is just like imagining um, warm afternoon at, in the autumn months and you're smelling the, the warmth of the sun kind of baking the earth that has all these dried shrubs and totally takes on that kind of a smell. So Goutal Sable is a ninth fragrance I'm talking about today uh, featuring Immortel. Now going back to a few fragrances that might not be, well just one fragrance that might not be all about Immortel but definitely has that kind of dry Immortel touch. We're talking about the house of Marc-Antoine Barrois. This is Ganymede, this one right here. Ganymede. 
Yes, a great, great fragrance. Very minerally, very musky, definitely suede, leathery, a bit fruity, and then of course very uh, immortelly as well. This fragrance, man, every time I introduce this to someone, they fall in love with it. It's that, it's got that kind of a thing going for it. Next to Aventus, next to something like Baccarat Rouge, I feel like this has a lot of like love for it. Like people really gravitate towards it because it's that kind of a fragrance and I, I could see that it's a really really unique smell and I would call this one of the best fragrances ever created because I think he's done the perfumer Quintan Biche has done a great job with this particular fragrance I think it's a, a winner of a fragrance but it's all about the suede leather as I said there's definitely these kind of like violet touches here not only from the, uh, the actual flower but also the leaves there's some juiciness from the mandarin orange note and then we've got that immortel we've got some saffron we've got some osmanthus and the kigala wood a wonderful fragrance this is Ganymede made from the house of uh, Marc-Antoine Barrois. Uh, this is the 10th fragrance. And moving on to the house of Amouage, this is Sunshine Man, this one right here. And this is, to me, uh, all about lavender, tonka beans, and immortel. Once again, it's uh, like the, the sun baking uh, where there's a bunch of lavender plants growing, and then next to them there's this uh, shrubbery. So you can smell the earth baking under the sun with the lavender and the shrubs. It's gotten sweet a bit, and of course the lavender kind of sweetens up as well. That's the kind of wearing you know, experience you have with this particular fragrance. It's a wonderful, wonderful fragrance. A bit underrated from the house of Amouage. It does feature lots of lavender, as I said. There's tonka beans, there's vanilla, there's immortel, there's brandy, there's orange, there's juniper berries and clary sage. To me, it's a very unique lavender fragrance. Not necessarily something like Lavender Extreme from the house of Tom Ford or Lavande from the house of uh, Molinard, but uh, very unique. Uh, the immortel it kind of makes it more like autumn-like, whereas the Tom Ford and the Molinard don't have that immortel, so they're kind of wearing more like an amber fougere, but here, since we have that immortel, it takes on a complete different kind of a scent profile because you have this kind of like brown sugary touches contrasted with the lavender and the, um, uh, the tonka beans in here. So this is Sunshine Man from the house of Amouage. I think women can totally wear that fragrance. Uh, I think you can totally get away with it, ladies, if you're curious about it. Moving on to the house of Parlement de Parfum. This is Mile High. This one to me is pineapple with Corsican Immortel, tonka beans, and patchouli. The combination is so unique and so delicious. You've got to get your nose on this because it's that juicy, wet, drippy pineapple along with that kind of dry, leafy, dried leaves and shrubs touch of the Immortel. Of course, they're taking on the sweet characteristic, a bit brown sugary, a bit caramelly, and then contrast that with the tonka beans and the patchouli. It's pretty sexy. I love this one. Very, very unique fragrance. Well, whoever thought about putting the Immortel with the pineapple came up with magic. I think, uh, well, it's Michel Almarac, the perfumer, and I think he's done a great job with this particular fragrance. It's my favorite fragrance from this house next to Wake Up World. If you don't know this one, do check it out. We're going on three years for the launch of this particular fragrance, and I Absolutely love it still. Really love that really unique combination of pineapple with immortel. Very, very unique fragrance. It's fruity, but also kind of like autumn-like, if that makes sense. So this is Mile High 38 from the house of Parlement de Parfums. All right, up next, the 13th fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about is from the house of Histoire de Parfums. It's 1740 Marquis de Sade. So this is an immortel bomb, but a very unique immortel bomb in that it has lots of immortel, so you have that kind of dry, leafy, bit of brown sugar, caramelliness, contrasted with leather, because it's a leather fragrance in the end. And even though the immortel is pretty prominent here, leather pretty much dominates. There's definitely a booziness here, and a lot of you were mentioning to me why I didn't feature this in a recent boozy fragrances video. I, I get the booziness, but it's not like, a real boozy fragrance in that it's featuring a boozy note. I, I don't get that. I think I'm getting the booziness from that Artemisia note in here, but for me it's more about the leather. It's really leathery, it's really immortel forward, and it features not only the immortel in the leather, but lots of patchouli with labdanum, there's elemi resin, there's some cardamom, of course, the Artemisia and the coriander. It's a super sexy fragrance, a great inspiration for Marquis de Sade. It's uh, from the house of Histoire de Parfums, meaning history of perfumes, and they've taken the Marquis de Sade character 
character and created a fragrance around his personality. Totally makes sense for me. It's 1740 Marquis de Sade from the house of uh, Histoire de Parfums. All right, moving on to the next fragrance, the 14th fragrance we're talking about today is another fragrance created by Quintan Biche. The first one I spoke to you about is Ganymede or Ganymede from the house of Marc Antoine Barrois. This one's from the house of L'Artisan Parfumer. It's Mandarina Corsica. This is yummy, guys. And this is once again utilizing Corsican um, Immortelle. It's inspired by Corsica and of course, Immortel, a lot of Immortel for perfume comes from uh, Corsica, from what I learned reading uh, and uh, you know looking at this particular book, Immortel. But uh, man, this is a delicious mandarin orange fragrance in that it has gourmand touches because it has caramel and Immortel. Immortel has those caramelly nuances, of course, brown sugary touches, but it's mandarin orange with caramel, Immortel, tonka beans. Of course, we've got some vanilla, there's some bitter orange touches, a little spiciness from cinnamon. Absolutely a really, really delicious citrus fragrance in that it's citruses, lots of it, lots of mandarin orange, but takes you to the gourmand direction and it's quite yummy. So this is Mandarina Corsica from the house of L'Artisan Parfumer. That's the 14th fragrance. And then finally, the last fragrance I'm talking about today is called Immortel Corse. I went to buy this specifically for this video because not only did I want to feature this particular fragrance in this video, but I also want to dig into this house because it's a house that I really, really appreciate, but nobody talks about them, including me, but I'm going to change that. I'm talking about the house of Parfum de Empire, brand new fragrance for me. Anybody a fan of this house? I know they're known for Ombre Russe, which I do talk about every once in a while, but they have some really, really great fragrances. Recently, when I was in Paris, I was at Javoy and I sampled the entire house and I'm going to slowly dig into purchasing a lot of their fragrances so I can talk about. This particular fragrance is an uh, inspiration of Immortel from Corsica. That's why it's called Immortel Corse. And of course the book does go into the fact that a lot of Immortel for perfumery comes from Corsica, the island off of uh, France. But this is a very interesting fragrance in that it's got that whole autumn-like experience from the Immortel, dried leaves, dried shrubs, contrasted with lots of apricots. So it kind of adds this kind of sweet fruitiness to the mix, a bit of leatheriness from the saffron, there's oak moss and lemons, but it's lots of that kind of brown sugary caramelliness from the Immortel contrasted with the apricots and it really does work. It has great lingering power, but it's not a screamer, but a very unique fragrance and that I'm appreciating that kind of autumn-like wearing experience with the apricots, fruitiness and that leathery kind of aromatic saffron under tones uh, with the saffron notes. So Immortel Coors is the last fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about. You guys know that house, are you a fan of that particular fragrance? Do let me know, put a comment down. And that's the last fragrance I'm talking about today featuring Immortel as a note. Are you a fan of this note? Is this the first time you're discovering this note? Let me know which fragrance sounds good to you and let me know which fragrance you have that features Immortel that I did not speak about. Of course, I don't own every single fragrance and these are what I have in my collection here in the studio behind me and that's what I wanted to highlight today. But let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Let me know some Immortel fragrances that you recommend so I can check them out. Other than that, guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. All right, last but not least, we've got one bonus fragrance. And I left this one as a bonus because we already featured this particular house uh, with uh, Mandarina Corsica here. And also this fragrance is not necessarily uber immortal, you know, heavy. So I wanted to feature it as a bonus. Uh, so it's Mont de Narcisse from the same collection of fragrances from L'Artisan. And I forgot the name of the collection, sadly. We'll have to look it up. But this is leather fragrance in the end with the Narcissus note, but it also features birchwood with Immortel. There's some plums and black pepper. Very unique leather fragrance, and I see a lot of leather with black plums or plums in general. So I think the plum note and the leather note really you know, help each other to create a great smell. But this one also has the birch, kind of gets smoky, the Narcissus, a bit animalic yellow floral touch, and of course the Immortel sweetens things up and makes them a little, uh, you know, brown, sugary, caramelly, and some spice from the black pepper. So check it out if you know it. If you don't know it, I think uh, it's decent, but it's definitely leathery, like very, very leathery and smoky with that fruitiness from the plums. So this is Mont de Narcisse from the house of uh, L'Artisan Parfumer, and that's the bonus fragrance for you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for another video tomorrow. Bye-bye.